DJ Khaled, we the best season ass with Charles. Cause I'm out here grinding. I do this for the streets, the runners. Cause I'm out here grinding. I don't care what nobody say, I'ma be me. Stay hood, stay raised in the streets. I'm out here grinding. Niggas talk about greatness whenever they speak about me. Cause I'm out here grinding. Brad Boy Podcast, episode three. Welcome back to the Brad Boy Podcast, hosted by Kyle Kerrigy, aka Kylie Watson. 0.003% got the final four right on ESPN Tournament Challenge. That's 657 out of 18.8 million. Well, I want to know who the 657 people are, man. That's impressive. I think they went to South Carolina. Somebody, I, that's what I said. They had to, somebody had to be, to pick South Carolina. I mean, you know, unless it was the redo bracket. You know, after the first or second it. round, was it the redo bracket? I got it on the redo. Remember? On the redo, the yeah. Gusto. You called it, huh? I called it. South Carolina. Thank God I called it because I don't have anybody in my final four. Yeah. Xavier, <laughs> Xavier won one more game. They beat Arizona yeah. on mine and then they lost the... Uh, uh, they lost the next one, but man, yeah, that that's impressive. That that six hundred fifty seven out of eighteen point eight million doesn't sound like a lot of people, but six hundred fifty seven people still picked those four teams. You know, they might all had North Carolina, but to get the other three, that, that that's impressive. I'd be posting all over Facebook if I was that one, just letting everybody know. Oh, I know yeah. what I'm talking like about. Like in the month, like you, you have to be winning all your pools. I yeah. mean, you have to have like a lock for right now. It don't matter who wins. You're cashing in with you if you're one of those 657 people. You know what would you say it was? Point zero zero three percent. That's crazy. <laughs> well, special times for the Brad Boy Podcast. We got an in-house guest today, a personal friend of mine, and Brad um, inside the Kerrigy Studios. Inside the brand new Kerrigy Studios. Kerrigy Studios. I like Moving the sound on of up. That. Yes, yes. <laughs> we got uh, Ross Mouton here. Ross played. Uh, for STM, also uh, played for UL at STM. He was uh, in the All-Star game his senior year. UL, uh, he averaged 17 points a game his senior year. He also played one year overseas in Hungary, and he also starred in his own Red Bull commercial. What's up, Ross? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you all for having me in the uh, Carrie studio tonight. It's a beautiful night, uh, beautiful studio that you got here, and I appreciate you all having me. No doubt. Ross was a hell of a player, man. I always say this about you, Ross, and I probably told you this before, too. Um, I think, like, you might be your best basketball player right now. You might not agree. You might say, you, I'm a little out of shape, this or that. But I think years after you finished from UL, you became a, a, a lot better basketball player. Not saying you wasn't good at UL. I mean, you averaged 17 points a game your senior year, which is – very hard to do in Division One basketball. Score double digits, you know, average that. Uh, very impressive. How, how was that senior? How did, how was it that senior? I know you got to shoot the ball a lot. Let's mm-hmm. just touch back on that senior year, and uh, you know some of your highs and, and maybe some of your lows too. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that, and uh, you know, I just have a passion for the game. It's my first love, and to this day, I still lift weights and shoot the ball just about every day. But um, but yeah, my senior year, you know, we never. Uh, we were transitioning. I had that strong junior year where about the, I think it was last uh, eight, eight or so games, I averaged, I think, around 12 and a half points a game. Um, had that big shot in the Sun oh, tournament. Oh, the confidence builder hits yeah. the game winner against um, Troy. 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 Yes. Feed yeah, from I, Big Mike. Yeah. Big and Mike I in actually, the middle. <laughs> and I actually remember hearing you in my ear, like, because it was right in front of our bench. Yeah. And I heard you say, shoot it. Shooting, yeah. <laughs> shot. But, so those those last games in in the end of that junior year, because even you know the first half of the junior year I wasn't playing that much. Yeah. I get spot minutes here and there. Yeah. And then uh, I started to get a lot of confidence there. And you know, Coach Bailey was shooting with me after uh, every practice, getting me better, and uh, I started to have a lot of confidence in my shot. So that summer, um, Coach Lee came to me. I think it was a phone call actually he called me I was in Destin with uh, my friend Murray Dickens and I remember the phone call he called me and said hey Ross next year you're gonna be our guy we want you to be the scorer the guy we look to to for big shots and big moments and so not that I wasn't working hard already but that really fueled my fire yeah 
and um, gave me that confidence to work even harder and know what was coming in the next season. So it's, a, it's hard for a lot of players sometimes not knowing their role. And he defined it right there and said, you're our man. You're the one I want shooting the ball. I want the ball in your hands in clutch time. So that gave me all kinds of confidence. And so that senior year, you know, I had David Dees on the other end. He also averaged about 17 points a game. We had a, a strong duo in the, um, the backcourt there. But, um, but, you know, we, overall, we, we were kind of – it was rebuilding year yeah. as, as far as the whole program was considered. But, um, but yeah, that year uh, I had the goal to win – to uh, contribute for my team, and I also wanted to be a professional as well. So um, whether it be NBA, of course, that's every young basketball player's dream. Yep. Um, and if that didn't work out, I wanted to play overseas. So um, that that presented itself. I had a few agents coming after me, um, asking me to sign with them. They were primarily overseas agents, mm-hmm. and um, you know they had I think one or two players in the NBA at the time. And I signed with one agency who actually was with Michael Southall and Tyrus Wade. and they Was had, that Edge Sports? Yeah. Edge yeah. Sports International. I think that was the name of that was. Yeah, I remember Edge. that. I remember that. Yeah, good pull right there, Edge. And they were out of Chicago. And um, for whatever reason, we didn't have a good communication, so I switched to a different company or agency named Pinsack, and they placed a lot of guys overseas. And um, anyway, I worked out hard that summer, just waiting for that phone call. And I actually got the phone call on a Wednesday saying, hey, we, we found a team that's interested in taking you. They want to fly you out for a two-week tryout. Uh, can you leave Friday? <laughs> this is a Wednesday to yeah. a Friday. And where was, so, where was that to go to? Uh, to Hungary. Hungary. Yeah, so uh, it was 24 hours of travel. First of all, I had to get all my things that I wanted to bring from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's a two-week trial, but maybe I'd be staying for 10 months. Mm-hmm. And it ended up where I traveled for 24 hours. I think I took about four or five flights and, you know, eventually was taking this small little plane into Hungary. <laughs> and uh, all I knew was Cajun country is, is, you know, I grew up right across from UL Lafayette. So we, um, I, actually, not we, I flew by myself over there knowing only Lafayette. Um, you know, I would go to Houston every now and then to train, but that was about it. When Once I got over there, I remember I got there they drove me directly to a game because our, our team was having a, uh, a preseason tournament. Mm-hmm. And they start real early over there before they get all their players. They, it was mostly comprised of the, the local guys. And uh, they asked me, you want to play tonight? <laughs> I just traveled 24 hours. I was like, <laughs> Fresh, you know, you know uh, I'll sit this one out. And so yeah. the next game, there was two more games. So I played the next day and the next day. I, sc- I scored 25 and 22, I think. And we won the little round robin tournament and uh, they didn't wait the two weeks the the owner of the team said we'd like to sign you they signed me and out there it's cutthroat i mean if you don't practice if you don't perform um you know two games in a row if you have two bad games management on all these european teams will come to you and say hey we, can, we got somebody else waiting if you want to if you don't want to perform yeah we're gonna cut want to step it up yeah. they gotta let you and go that <laughs> happened a lot of, there was guys that i would play against that were americans and they got sent home you yeah. know in the middle of the season but I was lucky to uh, stick it out, and I had a great season over there. I started every game, uh, averaged about 12.5 points a game. Um, we made the playoffs. We were 8 seed. We played the number one team, who was a very good team. They had a veteran point guard that really was like Nash. He could do whatever he wanted. Um, but uh, after that, I, I had a great experience getting to see the world and all that, but I really wasn't happy um, on the court. Very happy. Loved it. Outside the game, it was very hard for me just being in an unfamiliar place. It was kind of like Seattle, if you will, rainy, cold all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're saying that you miss ball crawfish, po' boys, yeah. downtown, yeah. hanging out with your boys, yeah, uh, maybe yeah. a girlfriend at the time. I think who's your wife now. Didn't you just, have, didn't you just start right. dating Kristen at the time? Yeah, that's right. So Kristen and I were uh, together uh, throughout that whole thing. That was another thing, you know, that was tough, but... Um, it was all worth it because now we have two beautiful little yes, boys that yeah. love basketball already. They're age four and two, Jude and Miles. So, um, yeah, it was all worth it. I, I love getting out there and doing it. That's awesome, man. Ross, to backtrack a little bit, we, we were talking earlier. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, you we were talking about how you went from almost registered in your freshman year yeah. to averaging 17 a game and, and – yeah. You know, some of the guests we're going to have on today and some of the other players at UL that you played against, what did that do for you to get you ready 
that senior year to be in practice with them every day. Yeah, so, I mean, when I was a freshman, I came in and I was probably 185, 6'6", 185. I ended up growing one more inch, but I mean, I was skin and bones. And, um, and <laughs> You still could jump, though. I could still jump, yeah. I remember I dunked on Sed. Yeah. Uh, Shout out Big Sed. Yeah, Shout Big out Sed. Cedric Williams. Big Sed and uh, Bourgeois, and Coach Evans was watching. He loved that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I mean, I probably – at any other program, I should have redshirted, but we had, I think, three or four guys that could, weren't eligible until December ended, until that January semester started. So I had to, you know, we didn't have a full roster, so I needed to play. And, you know, I got some, some nice minutes early on, but then once they came back, uh, I sat on the bench. So, um, but yeah, playing against guys every single day, like Brad, uh, I think there's pictures of me guarding you in yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dwayne Mitchell is oh, one that yeah. really sticks out my mind. You're talking about an NFL safety, yeah, six <laughs> five, that just looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, and I'm guarding him every day in practice. I mean, you 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 have to get better playing against guys like that. Orion Green, Tyrus Wade. These are all guys that are still playing professional basketball today, and you know, ten ten years after they finished. Now, 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 not to cut Ross off, but I have to I have to throw in. A good little story every time we bring a guest on and we and we, of we know we know a mutual a mutual story. Ross was Ross was a hell of a player, okay? Ross was a tough player. When I really knew Ross was and and I'm talking again to you, Kyle, like Ross isn't sitting here, but he's sitting right here with us. <laughs> I was doing that last week with you. Something happened in practice one day. You and Dwayne Mitchell got kind of tied up, or maybe an elbow was thrown or something like that, and they squared up on each other. Now, we always said in practices at UL, if somebody didn't have a fight during practice, it wasn't a good practice, which is true. No, nobody went home with a bloody nose, uh, you know, seriously hurt. But when I saw Ross, and I was coaching at the time, Ross, you were still playing that, that, uh, that last year with Dwayne Mitchell and, and Michael Southall. You know, they kind of had a couple pushes here and there, and they squared up. Where most people on our team, no disrespect to nobody on that team that was there the year, wouldn't have squared up with Dwayne Mitchell. Ross stood his ground, and, and I was like, man, you know. And then sure enough, like he, Ross said, they ended that year on a high note, and then the next year going forward, I mean, they averaged 17 points a game. But I always remember that moment when y'all squared up because p- people have squared up before on the team, and it was like, oh, oh, and we kind of would always break them up. And we did the same thing with Ross. They might have swung a couple licks at each other, mm-hmm. you know, not necessarily one to connect and really knock somebody out, but just the – I think we were doing five on five or maybe three on two, two on one drill, and something happened, and it just – you know, spark something, but I said, man, Ross ain't scared, mm-hmm. you know, because when you... He's got that dog in him. Yes, when you get out there on that Division One level and you're the guy, which we didn't know at that time that Coach Lee was going to call him and, um, and and say that he wanted to be the guy his senior year, which he turned out to be, you, you have to have that dog in you. You have to have that fighting because when you walk out on the floor, that dog on the other side of, on the, on the other side of the court, whoever's on the other team is coming guard you. Mm-hmm. And they're going to get in your stuff, and they're going to let you know it. Especially, and this is not a racist comment by any means, but being a white basketball player right. on a Division One level, they got a lot to prove, man. And, right. and, and if you're scoring points, that's really the next player, whether it be white or black, that's going to come in and want to D you up and shut you down. That next year when Ross was a senior, he never let anybody uh, get in his head or, 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 or physically or emotionally get him out of a game, which – Averaging 17 points a game, that's your average. you got to do that consistently to average that. But, you know, going back to those days when you played, and we reminisced this last week with Brandon Mouton, some of his favorite people that he played with or, or just some memories, um, you know, outside the, the, the playing or, or just, you know, day-to-day life in, at UL. What were some of the, the, the memories, you know, that you're thankful that happened and, you know, just something that may have – what made you want to come to UL? And then you could go from there. Oh, I've been a fan my whole life of the Cajuns. I was in the Young Raging Cajuns Club. My dad played basketball as a freshman there, mm-hmm. and he also completed a. Um, I think he played three years at, as a baseball player, and then went pro uh, with that. So I've always been a Cajuns fan my whole life. But um, you know, I grew up um, also a fan of STM. My brothers went there. I always knew I wanted to play basketball there, and then I was a big fan of Brad and Brandon Mouton, who y'all had last week. Um, really looking up to them. I remember walking through um, STM's halls and as a freshman, 
looking up at Brad and Brandon like, <laughs> Dude, they, these guys are huge. I your, mean, your freshman year, how tall were you? 5'11". Five 5'11", eleven. Five eleven, his freshman year in high school. and you, you I guess yeah, you six, just stopped six. growing now. You're 6'6 six, six now, you know? Yeah, six, I actually grew an inch in college. So, I'm so six, 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 seven, yeah. yeah but yeah. I grew seven inches in uh, And I always said this about you, Ross. I always, and, 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 I, and I would say the same thing about myself when I was coming out, uh, finishing college ball. I always said that. I said if Ross could just get to a team – you know, get past the tryouts and all the stuff you have to go through, mm-hmm. the pre-draft camp tryouts. And if he could just get on a team in the NBA and, like, practice with them and stuff, he would make the team. But it's so hard just to get that, you know, just to get that, that, that you know, that spot, just to get that opportunity to be on the team. And I always said it about you because, I mean, 6'7", can jump, can shoot. He said he started off at 185, but probably when you finish that UL, fan? you know. Oh, my wingspan's probably six seven, six eight. It's not yeah. much, you know. I know some Your guys team. are longer than yeah. than yeah. their uh, height, but uh, mine's right around there. But man, I appreciate that. That's that's a huge compliment. <laughs> I, honestly, I always would tell people that. You know, they say, what, what's Ross going to do? I said well, he's probably going to play overseas. You know, but I said if he gets a shot to get on or get in maybe the, the a summer league or get you know into where they actually start practicing. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, coming in, you, you're the low man in the totem pole. I mean, I wasn't in a McDonald's All American where you're coming in and starting. So I. I had to uh, learn the ropes, and you, uh, Southall, the Reed Bridges, oh. um, were all guys that, that took me under their wing. And you know, outside of of uh, the court and outside of basketball, taught me about college life. Um, you know, show, taught me about the mentality that you have to have. You're talking about you know not being scared of anybody. Y'all really taught me that mentality coming in. And uh, as a freshman, you know, it, it can be, it, it is a huge step from high school to college. So the mentality is, as well as the physicality has to be there and you have to be willing to change and adapt. So, of course, Brad, I mean, even through when you were a coach for me, uh, you were a GA over there. Um, I remember in that summer, you know, talking to you after Coach Lee said, you're going to be the man. I called Brad. Brad said, look, you get that one dribble pull up. That's going to be your bread and butter. That was my bread and butter. If I went open for a three, I'm going to pump fake. They're going to respect the shot, get them up in the air. And you can't, I mean, in college, there's so much help defense. Unless you have an open lane all the way to the hole, you've got to have that one dribble pull up. And that became my bread and butter. I felt like at one point my senior year that I could not miss that shot unless, you know, I had somebody just right up in my face. So that was something that I worked on all summer. Shout to Murray Dickens again because he was a guy – who still to this day is passionate about basketball. He would come rebound for me. He would come, uh, you know, we'd do this drill where I would shoot one shot, a uh, three-pointer. Next time I'll do one dribble pull up to the right, one dribble pull up to the left, and then I'll do a step back. And I'll do those four shots over and over and over and over until, uh, you know, I made, I think, 15 or 20. But anyway, um, and then I think overall, no disrespect to you, but Brian Hamilton was my favorite player to play with. Um, who, who we're going to have on the show in a little bit when he calls in. B-Ham, shout out to B-Ham. Oh, my goodness. This guy, he would get on everybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you were, if you were the star player. Don't, don't skip a day of going hoop at the gym, huh? Oh, my huh? goodness. In the offseason, <laughs> we played pickup games in black, and we played pickup games in bourgeois. And if you were late, he would let the whole gym know. He would let the girls running on the track know. Yeah. He would yep. let whoever in the gym know that you're late. Or if you just lost a game and you played one or two games and you wanted to leave early, he would let everybody in the gym know, you're leaving early. Yep. You shouldn't be leaving early. Yep. You should be playing. You should keep going. You should work harder. And um, talk about a guy with heart. You know, he played, he played the four. He was 6'6", 185. He played the four. And he dominated he dominated, the yeah, all-conference player. My goodness. But, uh, but, yeah, you see these guys like Kentucky, how you saw them. Uh, crying the other day, and people were like, "Why well, didn't no one and Duns had that that uh, kind of feel for the game where they love their teammates?" It, it doesn't matter, you know. When I when I was a sophomore, that's when uh, Orion and um, Brian left the team, and I remember when we lost to Louisville in Nashville in the in the locker room, crying like it was my last game because yeah. <laughs> it. Coach Coach Shashesky said this the other day on the radio when they lost. It's like a funeral because that team mm-hmm. will never be that team yeah, again. Yeah, be the same. Right? Yeah, yeah. You'll right. have eight, nine guys right. come back, but you will be missing those other. So it's kind of like a funeral. You you're never gonna get to play with them again, and that literally broke my heart. I love playing with those guys, and it was like that every year when the season ended. It it really hurt, and um, 
you know, that was some of the best years of my life. So I'm just, I'm just glad it all happened. Yeah, that, you know, the, from what I just took from, from what Ross was just saying is that if you uh, motivate somebody that graduated from St. Thomas Moore, i.e. Brandon Mouton, who spoke highly on the motivation, when he got the call from Coach Lee, straight to mind thinking, I've got to go work in the gym. You know, he did call his boy Brad Boyd and ask him a little something about what mm -hmm. to do. But, you know, he worked on that. Right. He worked hard. He perfected a couple simple moves that allowed him to score 17 points a game at a Division One level. You know, well, so and, and that, that's what I like to hear is when you said that was going to be my bread and butter. Brad, you know, gave me gave me a little drill. But you knew that pull up and you drilled it and drilled it. And I remember maybe a year ago when Kobe retired, Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. he worked on one move for hours and days. And I think kids and, and even professionals and college players get confused, you know, because they want to work on all these things. Just be good at that one thing. Yeah. And I think that's what you were kind of saying. You know, I knew that's what I was going to, so I knew I had to, when crunch time came, mm -hmm. and I, you know, he was taking away the left or taking away the right, I knew I had one move that I could go to every time, yep. you know. Now, listen, we didn't touch on Ross at high school at St. Thomas More, which he had a great career, went to the top 28, just like myself. We talked on Ross at UL, mm -hmm. um, you overseas. know, playing overseas. I want you to tell us a little bit, because I think, you know, just like we had Brandon Mouton on the show, right. we talked about him uh, raising beagle dogs and doing something. You know, this, this pertains to something still in the basketball uh, realm of things, but I think it's pretty impressive. Tell us how you landed a Red Bull commercial. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so Red Bull, they're a real interesting company. They um, do all kinds of, th kinds of things to promote their energy, energy drink. Um, and right now, I'm not going to promote it. I don't actually drink that. Uh, I'll, drink a cup of I don't, yeah. Yeah, I'll drink a cup of coffee in the morning, but I'm not, I don't want to give you wings. No. Uh, I mean, it'll, it'll pump you up, but it'll I don't know about up. all those ingredients. But um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, sorry, Red Bull. But um, yeah, so I was, uh, there's a guy that I know from Grand Isle who I played in a couple of tournaments with, and he uh, he texted me one day with this link and said that there's a red. So they have people in Grand Isle that play basketball? They actually have a, a nice tournament in Grand Isle. Uh, they play it on the, the, I think it's the second or third floor gym because everything's yeah, up on, on stilts. So shout out, uh, <laughs> shout out uh, Judd Wright's dad, Denny Wright, who's the Grand Isle basketball coach. And I was saying that jokingly because they actually play basketball year-round in Grand Isle, mm -hmm. and most of their teams are, are pretty good over the years. Small class B, class C school, but... Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, Ross West and uh, who was that other um, good player, Moore or something? Yeah, like Clarence that? Moore. Yeah, Clarence well, they played Moore. a little further north of the Bayou at South Lafourche. You know, when you get the mm -hmm. Grand Isles, the end of the world down there. But they do have a high school, they do have a team, and, and they do have a gym that's uh, on stilts out there. You know, away yeah. from the flooding. So uh, Robert Vegas sent me this link, and I had never heard of it before. But Red Bull had a one-on-one uh, -on -one tournament, and it was the only time I'd ever heard of a format of one-on-one. -on -one. I've heard of three-on-three, -three, I've heard of five-on-five, -on -five, of course, but one-on-one -on -one tournament, and I was like. Man, I'm feeling really good about my game. I was still, let's see, I was probably uh, 25 when that uh, happened. So anyway, there was a qualifier in all these different cities, and New Orleans had one. So I went to the one in New Orleans, and it was outside in August. <laughs> and uh, luckily, they at least had a pavilion over the over the court, but it was still outside. And um, they, take, they took the first and second place player, um, and I ended up qualifying to go to the championship, which was a world championship. They had players from all over the world, 60, 64 players. And it was on Alcatraz. It was called King of the Rock because, of course, the basketball oh. is called The Rock. And yes. Alcatraz is called The Rock. So we actually took a ferry out to Alcatraz, and they had the playground set up with goals. And CBS filmed it. They, they had announcers and everything. And we played in a one-on-one -on -one tournament out there. I ended up losing by one in my game. It was a tough, tough game. The wind is crazy out there. No excuses, but uh, you know. How's, any, uh, any, how's, uh, how's Wesley Snipes say that on uh, 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 White Men Can't Jump? Look, look, Cormier's doing a little shimmy. Cormier's <laughs> doing a little shimmy. The, 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 the air and the wind uh, may adjust that jump of five feet to the right or left. You know? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, it was an incredible experience. And actually, so we, I was in the dunk contest in that, and I did a little 360, and um, they took that one little clip. And this was a Red Bull commercial that had clips of you know bmx, uh, BMX. Yeah. they had skateboarders they had yeah they had everything and they just from that whole you know four or five hour tournament they took this one little clip and it was me dunking and i was watching the um nba playoffs in may and i forget who was playing maybe the mavericks and the heat and i'm sitting on the couch and i was like was that was that me yeah <laughs> you know is that me on tv so i immediately <laughs> called my brother i was like did you see that he's like yeah i thought that was you 
So, because uh, they didn't even tell me that I was going to be in the commercial. But, um, but yeah, that's how I ended up in that commercial. And since then, I've played in two three-on-three three tournaments under Red Bull. And um, we won the qualifier in New Orleans and went on to Chicago. We ended up losing out there. Chicago team won, a real gritty team. We actually played in the first pool. And I met some of the toughest guys, you know, the inner city, strong, strong, tough, gritty guys. And, um, and then recently we played in another one around the All-Star game, the NBA All-Star game, three-on-three. We lost by one in the finals. Oh. And uh, had we won that, we would have gone to Washington, D.C. and played in a world three-on-three tournament. But these three-on-three things, I know you, you want to talk about the, yeah, uh, wanted, the one. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, Ross. You, we're hearing a bunch of this big three, mm-hmm. former NBA players. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ice Cube's leading it. And I don't know if people are taking it serious, you know, because you'll only think of five-on-five, five, the normal basketball fan. Can you talk about how competitive and how real – this this big three is gonna be oh, yeah. since you've had some experience with yeah, three. Yeah, well, three on three, it's it's growing in popularity. I mean, um, they actually have uh, world tournaments where the the USA and other nations have a national team. Um, they have their own set of rules, and it's really high octane offense. So, the three on three rules, it's a twelve second shot clock, so very fast pace. Um, if the other team makes the ball, it's not make it, take it. So the other team makes the ball, you get the ball out the net. You don't have to take it out. You just take it past the three-point line, then it's live. You don't have to check the ball or wait for the other team. So it's very fast. And uh, half court, so uh, veteran players don't have to run up and down the court too much. But it, trust me, you get tired. And you I think have- I would be good at that. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, Brad, Brad, Brad would love the. They oh, got a four a, point shot now. Oh, they got a four point shot? Yeah. Shoot. yeah. And you don't have to run up and down Nothing. the floor? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> Sign me up. Sign but yeah, me it's, up. It's definitely a shooter's game. We had a guy on our team named Brent LaDuff um, in this Red Bull 3 on 3. And it was like a layup from three for this guy. He's about 5'10. He played this uh, Southern of New Orleans. And I think one game he hit like 10 threes. And we only played eight minute running clock. I think we put up 49. In eight minutes, and that's ones and twos. Wow! Yeah, yeah, it was it was crazy. Ryan, Gary, Xavier, Francis, and myself, because you can have a sub. So okay. yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, it's so usually have, four players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can have that sub, and you sub in on in a dead ball uh, real quick, like a, you don't have to wait for anybody. It's kind of like hockey, just boom in and out. Um, but yeah, three on three is growing in popularity, and um, you know, I I think it's gonna it's gonna be there. It, I don't know how big it'll get, but um, but it's definitely nice to see big names like they have in Vegas under Ice Cube and the big yeah. three. I mean, you hear... Allen Iverson. Yeah, oh. Uh, Steven Jackson. Oh. Chauncey Done. Bill. That's all. Yeah, this yeah. is Allen Iverson. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> yeah. I had a wall in my... Charles Oakley's going to be know, a coach. You know the name. Yeah. You know, you, know, uh, you, know, you know Charles Oakley threw me out of party one time? He did? No way. When I was 12 years old, like, 13 years old, we're in... Uh, we're in Richmond, Virginia, playing okay. for the Lafayette Aces. Um, uh, we're staying at the penthouse because I was with Mr. Uh, Bill Busbus, Ace okay. Transportation, his son Matt. We graduated STM together, AU team, and we're coming back from the pool. So we go top floor. We're in the penthouse because Mr. Bill, you know, yeah. they were big time. You know, we're on top floor. We're walking to our suite. This random dude grabs me and he goes, "Tony Ku coach." <laughs> you want to meet somebody from the Bulls? And, and me and Matt were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." So we go into the party. It was directly across from our suite, their suite. So we open the door, we go into their party, and he brings me to Ron Harper. He's like, no, this is Ron Harper from the Bulls, you know? I'm like, oh, my wow. God, Ron Harper. We're 12, 13 years right. old, like, you know, starstruck. you know, starstruck. Well, across the room, I hear somebody say, hey, man, them kids can't be in here with them shoes, no shoes on. This ain't no pool party. And when we looked like that, it was Charles Oakley, and he was dead serious. <laughs> And you're like, yes, sir. He, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. The guy that was with us, he just disappeared. Like, he, the guy that brought us in there had, like, as soon as Charles Oakley started talking, he shot out. And he was like, yeah, this ain't no pool party. Y'all ain't got no shoes on. Y'all can't stay in here. So we, uh, that's my Charles Oakley moment. He did, uh, he did throw us out of a, a, a penthouse. I think we were staying at the Hilton or something in Richmond, Virginia. And, you know, uh, shout out Wild Game Nation, Matt Busbus. I know they sold a company a couple times over so i'm not sure who they honor synergy or something like that but you know definitely shout out matt Busbus, bill Busbus, and and it all goes along with what ross was just talking about basketball if you take it seriously you get your grades you go to college you, you get a basketball scholarship basketball can literally take you across the world right? can. yeah you can try i mean I, we, me and ross traveling for for ul we probably touched 20 states you know, I probably touched 20 or 30 states in my three, four oh, years. Yeah. Ross the same way, traveling all over the country. Ross traveled all over the world. Ball you know? is life. Yeah, like, ball. Like, I, the other day, I, you know, they had that brand, they had people that had the same. I mean, it really is. It really can make a great life for you if you utilize basketball, don't let basketball use you. You work hard. You can get places. 
I mean, to this day, I have a, I have a great job, job that provides for my family. And when I go in interviews, they want to know about basketball. Right. Yeah. You know, they know, they, they also want to know that I'm competent for the job. But what gets me in the door, I won't say that that's exact, the only thing that gets me in the door. But once I get in there, they want to talk about where I played, how it was, me going overseas and taking that risk. They love to hear about that. So, so basketball, it, it really can open doors. I mean, you hear that that cliche, that saying, but um, sports can open doors for people. Um, you know, use them, use it, kids. If you're listening, I don't know if any kids are listening, but make your grades, right. work hard in basketball, get that scholarship. Yeah. Um, you know, it can get you that education and then open so many doors for you in the future. You meet so many people, like you were talking yeah. about. I, I can't even. The word cliche really is a cliche but if you follow those things just like we always re- we referring back to Brandon Mutz a lot because uh, he said some of the same thing Ross is saying and it's people that are successful say the same things it's cliche that if you work hard you make your grades you happen to be good at basketball you're going to go to college get a free education you know right, we're going to take a second right here to uh, give a shout out to all of our sponsors at this time we want to thank our sponsors the Brand Board Podcast hosted by Kyle Kerrigy we want to thank Knight Construction and we want to thank Lafayette Winair, a Tim Star service company and provider. All right, we're back with the Brad Boyd Podcast, Episode 3. We uh, we kept Ross around for a little while. We wanted to definitely uh, be in the building when we got this next guest on. Um, former teammate of both of ours. Um, one of the few people like yourself, Ross, to win back-to-back conference championships, to go to the tournament two years in a row ever in the history at UL. Mm-hmm. And we're speaking on... Uh, Mr. 45, Brian Hamilton, is on the phone line with us today. Uh, Brian, and I'm going to give you a little introduction, Brian. Brian was, uh, which we know B-Ham. We know Brian as B-Ham. His nickname is B-Ham, Brian Hamilton. All-conference player, uh, two years that he was at UL. All-conference, all-tournament team, which is big. I mean, you could be all-conference during the year and maybe not show up at the conference tournament. B-Ham was one of the guys that showed up big in the conference tournament. We just showed you a lot of love, uh, B-Ham, in the last segment. Just talking about how hard of uh, – how hard a worker you were, um, you know, how, 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 how fearless. We talked about, you know, not being scared when you were playing basketball, not just yourself, but me and Ross as well. And, uh, you know, that, that being confident has a major, uh, major part to do with being successful on the Division One level. So, listen, we, you know, it's March Madness. We, uh, you know, we wanted to bring in guys these first couple weeks of these podcasts that have dealt with playing in the tournament. And then being that y'all are both UL graduates like myself, um, you know, it's just it's just suitable for for these first couple of episodes, Brian. So look, B, tell them tell tell the tell the listeners what you're doing. Um, tell them how you've been, man. A lot of people, and I told you this before, Behan. When I go around to the Cajun games over the last five ten years, people still ask about Brian Hamilton. To me, that says a lot. That says what type of person you were. That says what type of player you were. And um, you know, we, we we talk with Ross about our UL days and stuff like that. So just touch base. How you? How did you get to UL? And then some experiences that you had, some of the good, some of the bads that you experienced along the way at UL. Uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's well. Anybody, by the way, I appreciate the introduction, B. But um, well deserving. Yeah, you know, no, 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 I appreciate that. No, I've been good. I've been still been back in Houston. You know, I came back to UL. Uh, let's see, about two years ago now, I guess, and just kind of finished my degree. I thought that I had a uh, semester left in that. So I came back and finished that for the ones who knew. And then I stopped my playing career in, I think, 2013. And so now I'm, I just uh, got back into kind of giving back to the kids a bit, you know, so I coached the team at private school this year. And, you know, kind of been on the age circuit, you know, getting back into my basketball roots and kind of getting back into that tune and seeing, like, what's going on nowadays. And, you know, and uh, other than that, I've been pretty good. I've been pretty good, so, you know, just checking out your show. Yeah. But I guess you gave me a lot of questions. Let's see. So, I guess how I got to UL, that we were starting? We yeah, well, well, I'll touch base on what you just said. Be, um, um, you know, he ran through his career real quick, you know, real fast, which I thought he had a great career at UL. I mean, just a brief for me. Yeah, you know, just a brief. And, 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 and B. Ham, just like last week, Brandon Mouton, not not the not the biggest of talkers. B. Ham never would talk our ears off. You know, definitely got got good information, got a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, touch base of how this this is the story I remember, B. Ham, and I'll let you feed off this. Uh, you were driving down the road. I think you were heading to Southern Miss. Coach Evans, some kind of way, got in touch with your dad when maybe you were in the Lake Charles area. Told him, hey, pull over. You know, 
t- t- tell them how they got you to. I- all I remember seeing you in the conference center one night, and I was like, "Is this guy coming and play for us?" And like, "Yeah, he's coming and play for us." And then you know, getting to meet you. Tell us how that all played out. That 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 road trip heading to Southern Miss. Yeah, I try. Yeah, I try to brief it because you know, you well. I mean, there's so many stories I have to tell about the experience that I had while I was there. But uh, initially, from the start, I say uh, I headed to Southern Miss. And I say maybe two days before I'm about to head out there. I mean, I'm mean, not minor specifics, but just in general. Um, I was heading out there the next day to Southern Miss right before school about to start. And I got a call from Lafayette. Uh, not literally, but somebody called me about the call. Well, you know, you know, you, know, you, so. you Beham, you know we like to refer to our school now as the University of Louisiana. We don't want to refer to it as Lafayette, you know. So, so we got to make sure we, we get corrected on that, man. You know, we big time now, man. Now, when we, when we were when we were playing, it was Louisiana Lafayette. You know, we didn't we didn't upgrade it a little bit, you know. I always say you are Lafayette, always. You're always. <laughs> but um, that's just what I say. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was headed I was about to know. I got a call. I ended up talking to Coach Evans. Okay, I ended up talking to Coach Evans. Uh, that day, I think, like later, they can all have him early in the morning, I ended up talking to them probably about noon or something like that, and, you know, like I said, uh, University of Louisiana left yet, is on the way, so they like, you know, stop through, I talked to him, we briefed for a minute, talked about some stuff, and he's like, you know, just stop by, you know, we can talk in person and, you know, and see how things go, so, I mean, why not, so that's what I did, I did a little, I got to do a little homework on, uh, on UL right before I came down, there's just a little bit, see, went to the tournament, like, in 2000, and they had some things going on, so, you know, I get there, and I finally had a bunch of transfers there, and I asked about, you know, the size of the players that they had, he told me briefly, I met real quick, so I stopped getting a rainy day, met, went to the case, you know, me and my parents, and, uh, you know, talked to Coach Evans, talked about some things, and uh, everything sounded good, I ended up running, as a matter of fact, I think we went to uh, the famous old times to uh, to get a, a pole boy. Oh, yeah, shout out old time grocery. Her. You put? Did you put the po' boy on? Uh, did you put the po' boy on Jesse Evans tab like we, me and Big South all used to do? I mean, you know, we you know we you know we went with Jesse Evans. You know, <laughs> and, um, you know, real smooth. You know, that's our first time going to eat like that. So and then I think Big Mike popped up on here and that eat Big Mike and uh, Jared his son popped in on us. Like that was a random thing that happened right right then. And I was like, okay, we have a big man. I seen Big Mike. I'm like, okay. So you know, seeing Big Mike, uh, six ten a long. You know, not the skinniest guy, so you know, you you know, you can tell he can play a little bit. So I was like, that's definitely raised my interest. That just something like that. And uh, cause I just came on the basketball side. I was all about you know playing hard, and you know, I just want to go somewhere where I can meet guys like myself. So I was with uh, the hunger to win, just the hunger to hoop. You know what I mean? No, no, BM. We we definitely know what you mean because we just touched base on it. How you used to stay on everybody, you know, if they didn't show up for pickup games in the off season or they, you know, left the uh, the pickup games early. We we just touched on that. How you would stay on guys to, you know, to be better and want to hoop every day. Yeah, like I have to say this. Like I said, this story goes so many places. I try to, you know, uh, cut in where I need to, but it was just a lot of little different things. Uh, one thing we always what I what I saw. I guess is um uh, with the hunger that everybody had that probably attracted me the most just on the uh, when I asked about the team and uh like I said there's so much stuff that kind of goes into it but we read up to Coach Evans' office we went to his office and um uh, you know we talked again and he talked about some other guys I knew it was a transfer that was there from Florida and I was like Florida why was the guy from Florida no, I mean she's like no you know just as a player not knowing anything about nothing at the time I was young so. The last year at the university was in last year, so I've seen a big fan, and then I hear about a guy from University of Florida that's, that's here as well, that's about to sit out, and then I seen I have one game prior, so it was like, you know, something, I could tell something was brewing, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I could tell something was brewing. You definitely wanted the, you wanted the pieces around you, you wanted good players around you, and, and, and you had that right. those. Like, that was just as a, like, that, my parents had to tell me about that, I was just, you know, as I was seeing that as a player myself, you know what I mean, just the mentality, like, okay, something is going on, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it, it, it was a basketball vibe that you felt. And you, you speaking on the likes of Orion yeah, Green, I, I, who was I sitting out. Vibe, and I had seen everybody I could just tell. Yeah. The, you know, small pieces. So, you know, um, we, you know, we sit in the office and we talk about stuff, uh, myself and my parents with Coach Evans. And I guess he might as say, just by that day, went to eat. He talked, he talked to us, I'm sad to get in school, you know, you know, basically 
churches, you know, I had what I need to have. Yeah. So, shout out, shout out. You got to, you got to, you got to shout out, um, you got to shout out Mr. Bobby for, for sure. The first time I ever met your dad, Mr. Bobby, uh, he was already correct. He, he was, he, he, he was already correcting me on my follow through. He was giving me the pointers oh, yeah, of, uh, you know, which I listened to him. You know, anybody that was, you know, right. the older, wiser man, very successful businessman like your dad, who definitely followed the game. He knew what he was talking about. He'd say, Brad, you need to hold your follow through and get that elbow in, you know. And, and, and I would listen to him, and, and, and it would work, you know. But shout out, Mr. Bobby. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, there's so many angles to the story, you know what I mean, as far as it, it, was, it, was, so, it was about school, but then it started, it started being a lot about, you know, uh, the planet is more so like we didn't, you know, the parents, everybody's parents, your father and mother always was there, you know, at the time. But like I said, it just was a, it was a real cohesive thing on certain parts. Yeah. But, um, uh, we, like a long story, so we ended up signing that day. I never seen on Southern Miss. Yeah, never, we thank God. Up, thank God. We, we love, we love playing with you, you know Beham. So now tell me I this. Stayed, you know, then I, tell me this, B. Ahead, B. That year, that, that year you sat out. I can remember this vividly because you sat out a year. Um, Orion Green sat out a year. Dwayne Mitchell sat out a year. I think uh, Big South Hall was ineligible for a year. He was sitting out. And, like, we had to practice against y'all every day. So, like, we would get torched by the, by the scout team. And Coach Evans would be mad at the starting five. And, he, you know, he'd be yelling at Anthony Johnson. And, and you know. Yeah, yeah. Immediately, like very, very soon, like we tested yeah. it as soon as we got on the court. So, but, I, you know, I can remember some stuff. Uh, man, you know, first of all, like I said, with me and uh, Orion Green, you know, OG, we all usually call them, but um, that's one of the first things we like we, we noticed about the team uh, at UL from the beginning. Like, we was like, man, it's a lot of guys who can play basketball. Like, this is no joke. It's not surreal because I've been a lot of places and looked against a lot of the guys and and you know he had as well you know what I mean and then for us the both we were like man it's real hoop and so I was, we was excited to see like how it was going to do against you know a, a, a nationally you know kind of ranked team I think they were number 13 at the time yep 13 uh, in the country like, yep. about to be 13 or 12 and, uh, and like I said from what we see in the gym of how y'all play we was like we should better get with that you know what I mean yep. and we just want to see like I said we ran across you before you know you're one of a kind you know you're one of the most uh exciting things I got to see when I got to yeah, I had never seen excuse me you know uh, a white guy that could play like that and you know like, that's <laughs> a lot of places and there was that you were one of a kind you know what I mean and we all knew that you know what I'm saying I like I like that I like that uh that cred that line maybe 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 the one of the best white guys to ever play at UL I'll take as I'm sitting alongside Ross Mouton another I mean, another great uh white athlete that uh played at UL I mean, you know like a brother from another, you know yeah. nobody get that you know misunderstood at all you know you were my brother but but literally, you know what I mean. You were the first, only white guy to see hoop like that with that tenacity and that uh, swag. You know, you you uh, you know, you did what you had to do. Like, a little, a little swag before the word swag was so, coming out. Mm-hmm. So we had to see. You know, we like man, we had to see like how that goes up against you know you and Big Mike, especially you. See how that goes up against you know talent like that. And then so we like man, we're you know, we gonna we gonna ride to uh to Mississippi to see that guy. We excited about that. No yeah. problem. And see what y'all did. Y'all did exactly what we've been seeing. Yeah, kind of made you feel good that uh made you feel good probably that you you know dang we made a good decision we're gonna play alongside some really good basketball players uh, and yeah. you know um, to put you on the spot right here B and I'm gonna bring Ross into the conversation uh you know we're speaking here with Ross Mouton former UL guard and and Brian Hamilton former UL you know guard slash forward we were just joking earlier because we're saying how tough you were B you were six six 185 190 pounds playing the Playing the four at times, yeah. battling against big guys, but what? I guess I was that way. Yeah, yeah, you, you're about 185, 200 pushing. I remember that big 45 jersey used to used to which just slang over your shoulder all the time. You always yeah. were fixing the jersey. I guess I, I guess I could. I said, I wonder what. I wonder if anybody even knew why I even wore 45. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Why? Why did you wear 45? Because I wanted to. Man, I did. I changed my name to Brian Hamilton. That was like a personal thing. I was like, you know, join as my favorite player. So you know, it was when George stepped away for the game for like a year. Something like that, and came back, and he was 45 at the beginning when he first came back with the Bulls. Yes, so that's kind of how I felt about transferring. Like you know, I set out to come back. In. Oh I, wow! You know, I knew I was going to go in. I didn't. I didn't uh, know that about you. That's okay. good. It makes sense. Makes so, makes makes good sense. I, good I, I, good I, I, basketball I mean, tidbit right fine. there. Hey B, to put you on the spot, okay? Yeah. And I'm gonna ask Ross the same question. Give me your favorite Ross Mouton moment 
that you and Ross might have spent together, whether it be on the court or off the court? Anything you remember, something funny, you know, whatever it is, you know, on the top of your head, you know, l- let me know about that. I told Ross my, one of my favorite moments was uh, – when him and uh, Dwayne Mitchell squared off and was about to fight each other at practice, I realized how tough Ross was and he wasn't scared of anybody. So that was my moment, you know. Uh, man, I, I was, you know, you know, we took Russ, we took Russ right in. <laughs> him and Adam James under the wing, huh? We just shared some 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 good yeah. stories. We're not gonna put that on the air, I'm but uh. Glad, I'm glad. I, I'm glad just you know that he was at least to come and still see how it was going at uh, at you at the time. the top seven eight you might have been shipped out the next year man and look i'm gonna yeah, throw I'm, no way. Yeah. yeah so that's good you you remember some but, good uh, but i know uh, a couple different things i know uh just playing around a couple of times i might have uh defensively one time i know we used to connect a lot ross would help the guy I mean, make the guy come my way a little bit more and i could get a steal and i would always make sure you know i like to give the ball back to ross and make him finish my finish you know dunk you know making me comfortable like to that level of you know showing who you really are and yeah, I know we connected on that a couple of times, and you know, like stuff like that, I took personal with you know my teammates that we connect. You know, I really do. You don't get that with every team, and you know, Ross fit in in that. So just playing with Ross, period, like it's, it's a bunch of moments. Like I said, that that's special to me when it comes to that. Yeah, I remember Ross. Uh, and Ross probably remembers this too. Remember you tried to block that shot off the backboard, and you hit your elbow on the on the the box or something. I have a oh, highlight yeah, of that. Yeah, you, like, yeah. you like block the shot, and it come down and grab your elbow. And we're like, damn, did you hit your elbow on the on the backboard? It would have did it jam my shoulder, so I got like a funny bone type feeling. Oh, like in a stinger, my, in like my a stinger shoulder. or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was the weirdest. Weirdest uh, so, sensation. So I'm gonna throw this back to Ross. Ross, give me your favorite. You know, w- what you remember the most about yeah, Brian I, Hamilton? I honestly can't remember one thing. I just remember Brian Hamilton's attitude. It was like if you came soft at all on anything, like leaving the gym early or, or showing up late or not hustling on a play, he'd look at you like, "What are you doing? Like, what you mean? Like, yeah, like." He he held people in check. Yeah, like that. That was his best attribute. Like he. I wouldn't. You know, I just would ask. You know, I just just would inquire sometimes about some stuff. That's all. No, no. Honestly, Brian. Like I'm I'm telling you, Bham. Like that's you held the team together. You held us accountable. You brought the most heart to the team. Like like we mentioned, six six, one eighty five. You're guarding. Six nine two two fifty, and you're stealing the ball from him. You're blocking the shot. You're dunking on him, like that kind of thing right there. The heart that you brought pumped up everybody else and gave everybody else that that want to that that drive to be better, play harder, and right. want to be a better player. Like you were, you were my favorite uh, teammate ever. No, dang, dang, no, dude, you were my favorite teammate ever. I tell everybody that. Like yeah. when we lost to Louisville oh, wow. in the locker room. I cried my eyes out because I knew I wouldn't be playing with B-Ham or OG ever again. And that was, that was like losing a family yeah, member. Yeah, that was probably, like, that was probably one of the, the, I guess, one of the harder parts. I mean, you know it's going to come to an end as far as how cause you rarely get to play with players, especially five or six or seven, six or seven, at a, you know, that had the same kind of mentality or was willing to go there as far as to win a game and know how to really play when you need to play. Uh, can I say, I, uh, of course, it's probably like the best team I played with. I've never played with. I knew that even if I left, when I left, I was like, can I still get another team that's going to vibe like this? Or can I have the same connection like this? It's not guaranteed. That's definitely not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed in college basketball, period. Anywhere you go, you can go somewhere and you're not getting along with a lot of players and they can, you know, um, and you have to, you know, you got to you gotta do what you got to do. You got to play hard. You still got to do what you have to do to be noticed or, you know, whatever you want to do with basketball as far as basketball is concerned. You know, with being a student athlete is, is the best route. But, uh, so, you know, at the last, I think, you, like, North Carolina, when we went to the tournament, B, B-Boy. Yeah. 
can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I'm here. <laughs> the, the, like, the, like the last one, like when we went to North Carolina, I, I want to win that game so bad. Not, not too much for me, but just for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I know. So be, game, that's how I felt. And like, I still, like that game, that game, you know, we got uh, it was different things that were going on at the time, but even we still only lost by eight, even on our worst day, we still lost by just eight. You know what I mean? Yeah, do you remember, and, do you remember the, um, the practice before the game, the day before the game, I touched on this last week. I thought it was like the best oh, yeah. practice we ever had it as was, a team. It was, it was, it was practice how it was at practice. It was practice how what we really do. Like if you would have come out of practice in Lafayette, you would, uh, you would have seen that practice, and we did it out there. And we threw, we threw lives. We ran the floor. We went up and down. Ran our play. You know, it was real smooth. Yeah. We were getting shots. I had touched, just, uh, you know, comfortable. Yeah, I had touched on it that in the game, it's not that we were nervous. We just didn't play that well. You know, we speaking on behalf of the NC State uh, 2004 right. uh, NCAA tournament game, and then we're, you know, um, but that that game is the game that, but that game was the game that fueled me to want to go back and then how to play it the next time. That's what that's the game that fueled me on that. Some other games I wish I could have did, but anyway, that fueled me. That I knew mentally where I want to be in that game. Yeah, no doubt. And we're speaking with Brian. We're speaking with Brian Hamilton, former UL uh, guard forward, and Ross Mouton, for, former uh, guard at the University of Louisiana. One of the few players, <laughs> Ross Mouton, one of the few players uh, to ever uh, win back-to-back conference tournament championships, and that's that's definitely hard to do. And both these guys were, were part of those '04 and '05 you know, championship teams. You know, they took our banners down in the Cajun Dome, man. It makes me upset every time I go in the Cajun Dome. Yeah, it's like I said, it's... Uh, it's bittersweet. Like we still it's have the memories. Because I, feel, it, I feel some kind of way about it now. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. We didn't know, we didn't know back then what was going to happen. But like we, me, and, me and you touched on this past summer is that you know, we still played the games. We still won those mm-hmm. games. You know, it was actually, you know, grown grown adults that made the wrong decisions that got our banners taken away from us. But we still went out and beat those teams. You know, we still got the records to show for it, you know. But, um, yeah, just talking basketball alone, you don't so much as a, you know, at the end of, end of the day with that, you know, we're, we're the student, you know, we're the young man at the time in that. So it's a lot of things that we, you know, didn't know necessarily when it comes to, a lot of other stuff that could be happening. You know, you're just trying to be a student athlete, so just so, to, so be him. Before know, before on that, like, on that basis, say what? Be him. Before we wrap the interview up, we always do this at the end of the section where you know, you know, obviously we moved on from basketball as as far as our playing careers and trying to earn a living playing basketball. But just touch on some of the things that you're doing now. Uh, whether it be your business, I know you have your own hat line. I know you train kids now. Just touch base on some of those things that you're doing now in your uh, in your professional career. I mean, uh, like I said, this story has so many dynamics, so many dynamics to it. It's it, it's a, it's really a long story. But to sum it up, uh, like I said, I, I stopped playing professionally three years about three years ago now, and uh, like. You know, just like anything in life, you know, you, you know, try to diversify and get into different things, you know, especially what basketball has afforded me to, you know, see different things, meet, you know, meet all kind of people throughout my life, period. And, you know, and, um, and that's another thing that you gain from basketball, being an athlete at the same time. So, you know, with that kind of an index, you know, it's, um, you know, you try to see what you can do with that. And, you know, I, I'm a, I've been a creative guy since, you know, before basketball, so it's just putting all the things together and, uh, I started the clothing line, you know, about three years ago while I was still playing. And um, that's still going. I'm still having that. And I just started getting back into basketball. It's just why I'm up with the roots of it, you know, trying to give back, you know, the same passion that I had, you know, and have still for the game and, uh, and, to, and to pass it on to kids now. So, you know, I train a lot of kids at this point and, um, uh, and just you know, start coaching again. So yeah. So if you're in the if you're in the uh, if you're in the Houston area, definitely look up Brian Hamilton. You want to get your kids trained. He definitely does a good job. Um, uh, you, yeah, you know, if I were you, I would. But you know, you, you can choose what you want to choose. But if I were you, I would. Yeah, definitely. You want to get with B. Ham. We just spoke on how hard nosed, how tough of a player he was. You know, definitely some things that he's going to instill in the kids that he's training. Along with, you know, I mean, uh, Brian, I know you're not big on uh, uh, some of the other guests we're going to have on the show as far as talking themselves up. But, I mean, let's not get it twisted. Brian Hamilton made it two years in a row to the last day 
of an NBA team before they make the cuts on the last day, which is heartbreaking. I mean, I, and, I, and he might not want to bring that up, but, you know, tell him, I mean, B, you were training every day with Vince Carter in, in New Jersey. You know, you, you're, you're Vince Carter's partner. You're going at Vince Carter every day. You're Dean up Vince Carter every day. You know, Vince was basically your boy while you was there from the stories you tell me. And yeah, before yeah, before we end this, like just tell me what that experience was like. You make it that, that, that distance, and the last day you get let go. You know what were you feeling? Um, the first the first time I got the chance like that. Um, let's see. It was you know I was kind of you know messed up about it, but I kind of knew it was a, a slim chance anyway. The first time, the first time, but you know they still wanted to see me. And they still were like they liked my game. They wanted to see it anyway. So I'm like either way, I was gonna go up there and, and showcase what what I could do. And, you know, let everything on fire, they're going to fire you. You don't control what you can control. But, um, yeah, I went up there probably fresh, probably early summer. It was there all the way to November. And that's kind of how that went. And uh, got along with a lot of the guys that were there. And, you know, it was just how it, just how it, just, it, how it ended. It's, you know, it's a numbers thing. It's not so much you can do in basketball. Sometimes it's not about that part. It can be about the business side. That's just how it is, you know, for you play basketball or any sport, you know, the business side, it's not just about basketball anymore, it's, you know, a couple other things, so, you know, that's just kind of how that went, and uh, I was able to get another opportunity, so I had a couple chances, you know, in my shot in the NBA, and, you know, I'm thankful for that either way, I'm thankful for that either way, because that didn't even have to happen, I had to, you know, I had to do a lot just to even get that chance, you know, so. Yeah, definitely, definitely be him a hard worker, man, we really appreciate uh, you coming on our show, definitely tell your mom and dad. No, no problem, man. That's no problem. That's no problem. You know that. Definitely, uh, definitely tell your mom and dad we said hello. And I know if I come to Houston in the near future, she's probably going to have a meal or two ready for me, like she always had in our college days. I think she had four-course uh, breakfasts and, and three-course dinners whenever we came in late at night. From, from... I said it's a lot of dynamics to this story. It's, it's a really good book. Yep, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. Family, family. It was a lot deeper than that. Yep, family ties and a lot of basketball memories and family memories and just spending time right. in Houston and Lafayette. Definitely had a had a had a bunch of fun in college, man. Listen, B, thanks for coming on the show. I'll uh, I'll shoot you the link whenever it's done. And and have a have a good safe night, man. R.I.P. R.I.P. Okay. Lil D. R.I.P. Lil D. Man. Uh, yes, man. Man, I'm glad you said that. Definitely. definitely. No, another definitely. another time for another show. We could we could have a little D episode whenever we uh whenever we get this thing really rolling, man. Speak on speak on our, our good friend Damon Woodson. But B, we appreciate it. Yeah, I know Ross wanna tell you tell yeah, you no later. Problem, Ross. Talk yeah. to you later. Talk to you later, B. I'll talk to you later, bro. Ross. Okay. Talk to you later. Yeah, you good hearing your voice, B Ham. Later, man. Yeah, always, always, love, always. Let's go bring episode three of the Brad Boy Podcast to a wrap. Definitely want to shout out BradBoyBasketball.com, KatianaStarsBasketball.com. You can inbox me or email me at BradBoy30 at gmail.com for any training and individual training needs. Great episode. Great talking with good friends and good teammates, Ross Mouton, Brian Hamilton. Very appreciative that they're coming on the podcast. Look for episode four coming soon.